behind booktube it's missy and today i just wanted to pop on here and say hello i know i've been gone forever um it's a crazy time right now and there's so many feels there's so many feels i've been home since march 9th. So I actually I worked March 9th, which was a Monday. And then March 10th, I stayed home from work because I didn't feel well. Um, also, you know, I was coughing a lot and I didn't want to be stigmatized at work as having coronavirus. And so I took the whole week off. And lo and behold, by March 13th, which was that Friday, they said that we weren't coming back. And so far in the state of California, um, they're saying that the schools will be closed indefinitely. Um, there is no time frame that they say that will be open. So starting next week, Monday, we are back on schedule, um, but as an online source. So I don't know how that's going to work for me as an instructional aid for mild to moderate um, children with, you know, disabilities and so forth. Um, I will be available for questions if th my children that are in my groups need help, but I'll have to do all of this via the internet using like Google Meets and um, Google Classroom, which is very, uh, I don't know very futuristic in my in my point of view. Uh, I'm not used to that and I I like being able to not touch the children but like get their attention in a physical way like hey hi I'm still here hello. When you're online that's harder to you know not manipulate the children but kind of you're not able to mold them into your form of um, discipline you know what I mean like you can't say please have a seat take a seat sit down sit down stop talking let's get started uh, when they're on the other side of a screen you have no control they could just get up and walk away and you're like hey what's going on so uh, it's gonna be difficult starting next week for the last two weeks I have been um, homeschooling my children, using my own methods, um, pulling things out from my work, like Brain Pop and uh, Prodigy for Math and Typing Club and other typing games uh, for my youngest child. But then with my high schooler, I've been, you know, having him do like a Bill Nye video and um, continuing his book that he's writing and uh, doing a math worksheet that his teacher has um, put on Google Classroom so that way they can keep their brains functioning. And so yes, this week is spring break and no, my children are not on spring break because the first two weeks I allowed them to do nothing. They literally played video games from the time they woke up until the time they went to bed. So we're getting into the routine of being able to be accountable and in a scheduled setting because the kids are going to have to sit at the computer from 8.30 to 11.30 and really focus and work. Which means that, again, I will be unavailable to do videos because I'll be sitting there with my youngest uh, as his one-on-one -on -one aide now that he has no aides to help him with his schoolwork that'll be me. Um, for other parents out there, let me know what you are doing to keep your children in a scheduled setting. Um, I always feel like I'm too strict, but then I don't want to be too lax where they're not be able to, con you know, be able to handle going back to school. Anyways, that's not what this video is about. <laughs> this video is about me coming on here and saying, hi, yes, I've been gone for uh, uh, over a month. Um, where have I been? Sick. March was a nightmare. And um, so, yeah, this, this whole year, I haven't read hardly anything besides the very end of March. I, I was watching a lot of videos and I just got really excited to read again. And so... I've been working on eight books simultaneously. Sometimes I read more 
um, in one book than another, but I am slowly trickling through all of those books. I do have 10 videos, um, or at least ideas, that I would like to film. So that is cool because I'm, I'm getting creative again. Um, so hopefully, I'm not going to promise anything, but hopefully you'll be seeing a lot more of me in the coming weeks. Um, but I do have to like strategically film these videos where it's bright enough in my room so we have a little bit of natural light and also my husband's not here to make like you know obnoxious sounds that I have to then <laughs> cut out. I heard one uh one commenter say that my husband's a dick because he does that in my videos or what an, a bad husband or something like that which I deleted right away because I'm like hey you don't know my husband. That's his sense of humor. Um, I like fart jokes too. And I just, I, I take it out because some people don't. Just because you don't like that doesn't mean that you can criticize my husband for doing it. Um, I was, I was, you know, sharing with you in a loving and silly manner. And that person took it the wrong way. So I, don't, I wasn't complaining about my husband. I just said I, I have to take fart jokes and, and other kinds of toilet humor out of my videos. And, and so I don't have to edit more. I'd much rather uh, videotape when he's not home. So anyways, uh, since the last um, book haul that I did, which was back in February, I haven't really purchased any books. So this haul is going to be pretty short. Um, so let me just share with you what I have. These are three books that I received from Quark. I um, picked them out myself. They send me a list quarterly to let me know what books are coming out and if I would like to review them. And so I picked these ones out. This one is first. Um, this one comes out in May and it's called Siri Who Am I? Um, I just think that's like funny because it's, you know, it's Siri, so it's a modern twist. It's a contemporary, and uh, it says Mia might look like a millennial, but she was born yesterday. Emerging from a coma with a head wound and amnesia, she can't remember her name until the Siri assistant on her iPhone provides it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I, I love coma uh, stories, and so I'm looking forward to learning about the shenanigans that goes along with this. I'm thinking it's going to be something kind of like um, like the Born Identity, but like without the action or Memento, but without like the tattoos. Like I think she's going to have to like constantly be asking Siri about her life and <laughs> because Siri is a part of her phone, uh, maybe she'll be able to give her some details. Um, I just like that little modern twist to that. I want to know what happens. Uh, this one that has already come out, this one came out, I think, back in late February, early March, maybe. Uh, this is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I really, really love this author. And I guess he works exclusively with Quark, um, which is cool because, you know, they're just such a rad... Um, publishing house anyway. They do a lot of horror, which I'm obsessed with, and the way they format the books and put everything together is just really fun. There's no, um, like, out illustrations or anything, but there are these transition pages, and then this is what it looks like underneath the dust jacket. It's like this lime green, and it says Town of Mount Pleasant Public Library South. Carolina. So there's that. We do have um, a little bit of illustrations just on the title page. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this. It says also by Grady Hendrix, Horror Store, Reddit, My Best Friend's Exorcism, Reddit, uh, Paperbacks from Hell, Own It, Haven't Read It, We Sold Our Souls, Own It, Still Haven't Read It. I probably should pick that one up next. That one looks fun. I do own the paperback, and Quark did send it to me. I just still haven't read it yet. So definitely looking forward to this one. And then the last one I got from Quark was Bites of Terror. Uh, Ten Frightfully Delicious Tales by Cuddles and Rage, which, by the way, uh, 
this person wrote me on Instagram. I was super excited. So this is just a graphic novel with uh, claymation um, <laughs> food items. And so we got like a banana and, and all this stuff. So basically, if you guys are the same age as me, I just had my birthday in March. Uh, March 19th, I turned 39 years old. You can absolutely tell because I have these gigantic canyon craters in my forehead. Uh, I haven't gotten the crow's feet, not quite yet. I still don't have uh, gray hair, not quite yet. But these, uh, I would love to Botox because I hate them so much. I just hate them. And not because it makes me look old, but because when my face, when I have a resting bitch face, watch. They're still there. I, I hate them so much. And they started when I was 16. And they were pretty deep in high school because I was always shocked. Really? <gasps> wow. <gasps> ugly. Ugly. I should have, I should have known better. If I would have just thought everything was stupid and then had a blase attitude like, Ugh whatever, then I wouldn't have had that, but I was such a happy, smiley person, <laughs> and now, now the craters are huge. Um, anyways, tangent, if you're my age, you will know Tales from the Crypt, which there was a Crypt Keeper, and I actually found a picture, so here's the picture of the Crypt Keeper, very ugly and creepy um, skeleton man that would introduce us to three tales a night, I think it was three, maybe it was two. Anywho, uh, he would give us two like creepy tales. It was on HBO when I was younger, probably in elementary school. But this is just like that. So we have the the Crypt Keeper, which is this guy here, who he calls the Cake Creeper. So he's a piece of cake, and he gets um, someone comes in and he starts telling them a story. Cupcake. Cupcake comes in and the cake keeper is telling him 10 scary stories and uh, the cupcake listens to all of these stories and it's just really cute. It was a lot of fun. I liked you know reading that in between the other books that I am currently reading. So those are the three books that were um, sent to me by the publishers and then I bought one from the library bookstore before uh, we went on quarantine. So I found Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I do own Enchantment of Ravens. I haven't picked it up yet, story of my life. Look how fat this one is. Uh, Enchantment of Ravens, I was surprised how skinny it was. It's only about like, like this, like this fat. So this book is about double. Um, and this has nothing to do with the other one. It says, if you love the Hogwarts library, you'll be right at home at Summershaw. Tightly paced, hugely atmospheric, with a touch of wry humor, this book had me from its gothic beginning right to the perfect end. Um, I just really... This was a cover by. Uh, the Enchantment of Ravens was also a cover by. I mean, the story itself sounded good, and I wanted to read it because of that. I don't know anything about this book besides what I just read on the back. The only reason why I bought it, one, because I own the other book from this author, and two, this cover is gorgeous. Underneath the dust jacket, we have a black and green, kind of boring interior, or, you know, the, the basic thing with the book. And then our title page has a little bit of illustration, not much, but the, um, those are the chapter heads, just the little filigree going on, nothing special. I do really like when books have a very detailed, um, chapter header. Those all are always cool to me. So that was the only uh, book I bought, um, between on my last haul that I bought at the library bookstore. I went, I think, three times between February and our quarantine, and that was the only one I found that I actually wanted to purchase. And then um, I had my birthday, and I got two books from my friend Penelope. If you guys don't know Penelope, 
I will leave her channel link down below. Uh, she is amazing. She doesn't make videos anymore. She's taking a hiatus. I don't know if it's going to be for a year or what have you, but you know, she's on Instagram. I'll leave her Instagram down below as well because she's on Instagram um, every day and she does like Instagram stories, like long ones about what she's reading. So if you guys um, want to keep up with Penelope, my BFF here on booktube, uh, then check her out. I'll leave all her stuff down below. But she sent me two books for my birthday. I got American uh, Supernatural Tales introduction series um, by Guillermo del Toro, which I absolutely love. He wrote S Strain, and um, I almost said Stain. Strain, Strain, Strain. And uh, this is edited by S.T. Joshi. This is a Penguin Horror Edition. All the Penguin Horror Editions have these black uh, four edges, which I freaking love. Oops. And um, yeah, the end pages are also black. I just, it's so cool. So this is just a collection of short stories by different horror authors from America. And then she got me the Penguin Deluxe Edition of... Jane Austen. Uh, this is or Jane Austen. <laughs> Pride and Prejudice um, by Jane Austen. This is my favorite Jane Austen book. Um, and then second is Sense and Sensibility. I haven't read the other ones, which is a tragedy because I just really like the wit of Jane Austen. This also has deckled edges, which is my favorite. Um, so yeah, I will be... Look at the back. I love these pictures. I will be rereading this at some point in the month, next month or so. I want to read this out loud to my son because we got to watch the play um, last year. I think it was in like November-ish. His, his school put on two plays, the Pride and Prejudice one, and then they were going to do Carrie the Musical, which I was super excited about, but Corona happened... Um, the last day of school was the 13th, and their debut was the 12th of March, and so I missed it because I was still coughing, and I didn't want to be coughing during the performance, and also, you know, people would have been like, oh my gosh, she's contagious, um, so I didn't want that to happen, but I'm sad that it, I missed it, and now that school might not happen anymore, I won't see it at all this year, so that makes me also upset because the poor kids worked so hard since Christmas until now to put this performance on and they're not going to be able to show it. Anywho, um, I did have my son watch the 2005 edition of Pride and Prejudice and he said he liked it. Um, I do really like that one and of course the BBC edition, but um, I can't wait to reread it again. Thank you so much again, Penelope, for my birthday presents. So those were my birthday books. Literally, uh, nobody else, when you're old and like decrepit like I am, nobody cares about your birthday. Nobody buys you anything. You don't get gifts anymore. Maybe if I was at work, I would have gotten like a candy bar or something from a coworker. But I am so excited for the two books that I got because um, it made me feel special and loved. So because I only got the two books, I decided to go to Book Outlet, which I haven't shopped at for a few months now, and buy um, books from their spring sale. They were having a 15% off sale, which is not as good as their Black Friday, which is a 30% off sale. But I did, I did want to buy some more books, and so that happened. Uh, the first book I want to share with you quickly is a workbook that I bought for my son. And that is Brain Quest Workbook. This is for uh, grade 6, ages 11 through 12. Now you guys know my son has autism. So he's about like a year behind from his friends. Um, so some of these things are going to be easy and some things are going to be slightly harder. But it's a good practice to have like an in-between so that way he can continue to practice for school. I really like these Brain Quest um, workbooks. If you've never tried them before for your children if you do have kids. Uh, it starts with pre-K, so there's really easy ones, and then I think it goes, I don't know if sixth grade is the oldest. 
I'm sure I've seen older ones, but it's really cool because it does have the whole curriculum in here. So I think there's a table of contents. So here's the table of contents. So we have spelling and vocab, liter um, we have reading comprehension, research and analysis, again, more reading comprehension. We have writing, pronouns and punctuation, metaphors and meanings. And then we have the math section, which has multiplication and division, ratios and proportions, the number system, expressions and equations, geometry, statistics and probability. And then there's social studies, science, and then we have all of the answer key um, for the whole thing. And so... Oh, I guess, I guess those are all the books. So it only goes to sixth grade, maybe. Pre-K, kindergarten, first, yeah, all the way to sixth grade. Um, this is really good for elementary kids if, at, at this point in time. If, if you think that they're not getting enough schoolwork or what have you, I normally do a booklet like this um, during, like, summer school. I'll give them a... I, I always give them, like five weeks of work and then five weeks where they just don't have to do anything just so that way they remain productive in a way you know what I mean I just I know everyone's like well so-and-so's mom doesn't make them do schoolwork and I'm like well your mom's a teacher so you're getting schoolwork sorry Charlie all right with that being said I have been making him use that workbook since I've gotten my book outlet order Last week I was just having him watch videos. So here's the paper. Let me pull it out. Oh, good lord, I forgot. I bought that. I, I totally don't remember what's in this box. So the first thing that I have here is a graphic novel, and it's called Frankenstein Alive Alive, the complete collection by Steve Niles and Bernie Rice Wrightson with an additional art by Kelly Jones. I don't know anything about this, but um, I saw a hardcover. <laughs> I saw a hardcover horror, and I was like, I want it. Um, so yeah, we'll see if this has anything to do with Frankenstein. I might send this to Keely when I'm done reading it. But super stoked about another graphic novel. I do really enjoy graphic novels. All right, the next book I bought is. Attack of the 50-Foot Wallflower um, by Christian McKay Heidecker. This was on my most anticipated reads ages ago, maybe a year or two ago. I really wanted to read this because it seems like a fun and silly book. Um, it says, this book is wild, weird, hilarious, heartfelt, imaginative, and inventive. The spirit of Kurt Vonnegut is alive and well in its pages. Um, the cover, of course, made me really want to purchase it as well. It's just so silly. It kind of reminds me of Attack of the Attack of Mars. Am I saying it right? Attack on Mars? Mars Attack. <laughs> the Tim Burton movie is called Mars Attacks. And uh, that movie is ridiculous. I mean, when you have... Uh, What's her face? Oh my gosh, Jessica, Jessica. Why can't I think of her name? Sarah Jessica Parker. When you have her and Pierce Bros Bronson, Bronson as a uh, dogman's, you know, dogman is right by Dave Pilkey. <laughs> so you have uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and Pierce Bronson. And their heads are situated on little dogs, and they're talking to each other, and, and their little dog bodies are sliding around on this tabletop in a UFO. I mean, God, it's just hilarious. So this, <laughs> this reminded me kind of like that, or, you know, the, the, the monster movie where the girl, Reese Witherspoon, gets, like, huge... It's just silly. It's silly, and I wanted to read it, and so I bought it. I bought it because it was $1.50, and I wanted it. The next thing I purchased was Welcome to Night Vale. Uh, this is based on a podcast that I haven't heard, um, haven't heard this podcast. I don't listen to podcasts because I am not doing anything where I want to sit and listen to people talk. 
Does that make sense? I would rather watch a podcast so I can see the people's expressions and like their eye contact with the other person. I find that more fascinating than just listening to words. And if I'm gonna listen to words, I want it to be a story reading. Otherwise, I don't feel like I'm being productive. And when I'm cleaning and something like that, I want to be able to sing, so I'm listening to music. More tangent. Back to the book. Um, this is written by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. Uh, I've heard that this is really good by Erica um, from the Perks of Books. She went and read it. I think she might listen to the podcast as well. I've been waiting for this to come out without it being uh, large print. They only had it on large print for the longest time. Maybe I, I think I didn't get it right away because I wanted it in hardcover. I would much prefer hardcovers than paperbacks because paperbacks are... I love the floppy feel of paperbacks. Like this, this feeling right here. Like I don't have that SMAR thing. Like sound is nice to me, but feel, feel is nicer. And this... This and like um, shuffling cards is like I could go into a trance just by shuffling cards. So I do like the floppy feeling of a paperback, but I don't like the longevity of a paperback, if that makes sense. Okay. The next thing I purchased is a ton of French's Broken Harbor. Um, Oh, these are all the books that I haven't read yet. Hopefully this is the same size as the other ones. I kind of like my books to match, especially if they're in a series. I don't want them to be so um, different where it just looks odd on a shelf. This is also very floppy. Uh, this is book four in the Murder Dublin Squad series by Tana French. Um... The Maddie Hatter. <laughs> I couldn't think of her uh, channel name for a second there. The Maddie Hatter. So Maddie and I have been buddy reading this series together um, over the years. And we are currently supposed to be reading the fourth book. So Maddie, I do have the fourth book now. Uh, we can finally start it. I When's the one that was slacking? I had five forever, but not four. So now we can continue on. Um, the Dublin Murder Squad series, if you haven't picked up Tana French yet, is a um, series set in uh, Ireland, and it follows detectives in a murder squad unit. So our main character in the first story is a man, and he has to deal with the this murder case that he's working on. And then he has a partner that's a woman. Now, um, she's just a side character, but the second book is all about her story. She no longer works with the murder squad. She's on, uh, like, um, what is it called when people fight? Domestic. <laughs> Uh, she's in the domestic abuse squad, so she goes and deals with that instead because murder is too much for her. And then the third book follows another character that we've already met before. So I like the fact that we aren't sticking with the exact same main character, but it, we've already run through all the people. Like, So I don't know who this one is going to be based on, but I'm looking forward to reading it. And I really like procedural detective murder mysteries. Those are my favorite. All right, next I bought a nonfiction, and this one is called The Autobiography of an Execution by David R. Dow. Um, he, ha he has seen many of his clients put to death. Most were guilty. Some might have been innocent. Now in this controversial, insightful book, David R. Dow reveals why he wages moral battles on behalf of people who have committed abhorrent crimes. With brutal honesty, Dow takes you inside the issue in striking intimate ways through the complicated minds of judges inside prisons and the execution administration chambers and into his own home, where the toil of working on these difficult cases is often paid. Um, everything... Death, in general, fascinates me, and so uh, that might sound a little morbid, but I'm looking forward to reading this one. 
And then I have a collection of short stories. I was good this time. I bought a little bit of everything. This is called The Dark and Other Love Stories by Deborah Willis. Um, I've never read this author before. She got the Scout, the Scotia Bank Geller Prize. She was on the long list. And, uh, yeah, so we'll say, we'll, I'll just read one blurb. It says, Willis is an immensely talented writer, and her new collection is a thing of beauty, sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes funny, always sharply observed, elegant, and incisive. That's by Emily St. John Mandel, the one who wrote uh, Station Eleven, which I absolutely love. So I'm looking forward to this one. And lastly, we have a thriller, and that I've been wanting to read for a while, and that is... Riley Sager, 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 uh, Final Girls. I do own um, his second book, the blue one. Uh, they told us lies or something like that. It's called The Last Time I Lied. That's what it's called. Anyways, I'm bummed that this is a paperback because my other book is a hardcover. And again, there's no rhyme or reason. It just aesthetically, it looks nicer if all of the books match. Either all of the same author's books match, or the whole series matches, or what have you. But this is a standalone. I believe this is his first book. I could be wrong, but I'm looking forward to reading it ASAP. And that was it. That was everything. Um, again, I haven't... I've been like in this huge reading slump for about six to seven months. Maybe a year, because last year... It was pretty um, drastic as well, where I was only picking up maybe three books a month, which is not like me. Maybe I wouldn't even finish. I know that I didn't read anything in like December, or not December, one of those months. Like I didn't read anything in August or what have you. Um, and so the this amount of books, this tiny selection of books that I have is all I've been able to purchase because I'm trying to be wise about my spending like is it is it a good thing to buy a million books that I'm never going to read or should I buy a select few make sure that I can keep up with the flow of books that are coming in and going out I, I, I'm smart I I'm learning I'm learning so those, those are all of the books in this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you don't like makeup, um, then I will see you guys in my next video. If you do like makeup, I will be sharing with you my February and March boxy charm boxes. I figured since it's not worth making a separate video for these because no one really likes them, that I would just tuck things in to the end of my haul videos. And they'll be really quick because I'm not going to do a demonstration. I'm just going to show you what I got. And this is mostly because um, I get a lot of skin care because that's what I like more than the um, like the makeup portion. Like I love, love, love um, eyeshadows. And so if they just sent me eyeshadow and skincare that would be amazing um so i figured i would just tack this on the back for those that do like makeup so this was the february box and it's a little small one this is normally the size you get five full um sized products in every boxy charm box they're 25 dollars a month and every month the um the amount that the products cost is more than what you pay for the box itself. Um, you normally get a card in each box that tells you what's inside. And I was reading comments and some were saying that they weren't receiving these cards. And these cards are important because it tells you what each item is and how much it costs if you wanted to like repurchase it. Um, so this one had it. This one had it, but my March box did not, which is very strange. They all come with the eggshell uh, foam to keep everything, you know, in the box. But this is what I got in February. So I got Kate Somerville um, Active Concentrates. This is a biomimicking peptide. Smooth and firm. This one cost... 
uh, $98. Now remember, this is a $25 box. It retails for $98. I went and checked the website and it is like a real website and it is really $98. It's not like when you go to a store, for instance, and it, it'll say, oh, like like Ross. You go to Ross and the tag on the thing will say $98 and they're selling it for $45. This is actually $98. There's no like our, our price and their price. So if you wanted to repurchase this, it is $98. Um, I have used this and it smells. Um, I use this with my vitamin C cream. The vitamin C obviously smells like oranges. This one kind of smells like, like, um, like a plant. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's kind of like like a like a oatmeal kind of smell, kind of like not medicinal at all, but kind of planty. Uh, but it's pretty thick. So, like I have like my vitamin C serum is really serum serumy, serumy. That's not a watery, but this one is pretty viscous. That's a good word, huh? So yeah, I have enjoyed this. It hasn't, you know, caused me to break out. I haven't received any rashes. I don't know what it hell it does. I don't know how it's going to change my face, but um, I've been watching a lot of the Welsh brothers. And if you don't know who they are, I'll leave their channel links down below. There's Robert and James. Robert Welsh, they're both twins. Robert Welsh, if you haven't ever watched his videos, He's so, well, they're both gorgeous. I love the brothers. They're amazing. But he is so talented. He does a lot of um, makeup looks, like eye makeup looks. And he's very knowledgeable. He is a real professional makeup artist, so that's what he does for work. Um, what he does on Mondays is amazing. He has a series where it's um, Ghost Story Mondays. So he'll do his makeup while he reads ghost stories from us, from the viewers. So we send in ghost stories and then he'll read our stories while he's doing his makeup which is fantastic and then he has his brother james who has a health care channel so he's really into skin care um health care that's not the right word skin care he's into skin care and so he talks about the serums that he uses and um all about that stuff now he's not a um a certified like dermatologist or anything he's just telling us what he uses and what works and what doesn't work and he's got really oily skin like I do so I like to watch his videos um next <laughs> in the box was uh pretty vulgar and this is faux reels which I think is so funny and this is a black um mascara and I love mascara but look how pretty this is like it's got birds on it. I don't know if you can see the birds, but it's gorgeous. Um, I guess I'll throw all the boxes away now that I'm opening it all up. We don't need boxes, right? But love that. Love that. All right. And then I also got, it's called Queen, I believe, but there's a V in there. I don't know. It's called Queen. And this is a, a liquid lip. This is called Wifey. And um, it's a matte liquid lip. I don't want to put this on right now to show you guys what the color looks like because uh, my lips are hella chapped right now. So I will just do a swatch on my hand. And that's the color. I believe I have a color similar to this. I will double check. And if I do, I'll send this to my little sister because not only did I buy this box for myself, I bought it for her because she's in college and she can't afford her own makeup. So things that I have duplicates of or that I don't think I'll ever use, I send to her. Uh, we also got a Ciate uh, coconut setting powder. Now, I haven't used Ciate before, um, but I don't use setting powder, so I'm also going to send this to my sister. I can get the box open. So that's what it looks like. It's super cute. Just like that. It smells kind of like um, like cupcakes. 
And there is a little plastic cover so that way the powder doesn't just fly out. But it says, yeah, setting powder, so it should be like a translucent. It is white. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't use setting powders, so I'm going to give that to her. I'm also giving her that Too Faced um, Diamond Highlighter from the January box. And then I got the these three um, makeup brushes, which is super exciting because uh, makeup brushes are expensive. And even when they're cheap, I find them slightly expensive. <laughs> so we got three. We have a bronzer, a complexion, and a brightening brush. I don't use face stuff, but these are so soft. And this is from the company um, Alimar. Yeah, Alimar Cosmetics, which is, I think it's Kathleen Lights' cousin, or maybe she's just her friend. I don't know. But anyways, this is for bronzers. Again, this is for your complexion. So I guess you could use this for contour if you wanted. And then this is a highlighting brush or, you know, to set your under eye concealer, whatever you want. Um, I am not a makeup guru, but I do watch every video. So I'm quite knowledgeable of terms. And these are very, very soft and very, very fluffy. So I am excited. I don't have enough face brushes, even though I don't use face brushes. It's good to have some on hand. All right, next is the March box, and this one was a lot bigger, and it was confusing because um, when I opened it up, what was inside did not warrant that big of a box, as you can see. I was like, wow, why is it so big? And it's because this eyeshadow palette is quite long. Um, yep, this is a name brand eyeshadow palette. So this is their own eyeshadow palette. This is the BoxyCharm eyeshadow. And these are the colors. I did swatch them and they are really pretty. I do like the shimmers. Shimmers are gorgeous. Let me show you just a couple. Um, we have Swipe Up, uh, Full Size, and Charmer. Let me just do those ones. You see that? I don't know how well you could see that in the light because it's really bright. But let me just do some swatches. We have, what is this? Swipe Up, Full Sized, and Charmer. So there you go. Ooh, sparkles. I love sparkles. So, so much. All right. Um, I did not read the rest of the prices for the last box. I don't know if you guys are interested in that. Um, but the Alimar face brushes, they were $36. The Ciate setting powder was $22. The Pretty Vulgar Mascara was $23. And the Matte Liquid Lipstick is $17. So I'm not going to do the math, but all of that, especially because of the, um, the reshaping serum, this is $98. So way more than the $25 box price. Now with my March box, like I said, it did not come with a card, so I don't know how much all these cost. I would have to look it up. Um, but we have Murad here. We have Hydration, Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture for Eyes, Hydrate Intense. Uh, so let's open the box up. I didn't open this up at all and look because I wanted to open it up in front of you guys. And oh, here we have it. So it's a an eye cream. I been wanting an eye cream. Some people say eye creams are pointless. Doesn't smell like anything. Um, but I like them anyway. I do, I am prone to getting those little white, um, fatty bumps underneath my eyes that look kind of like whiteheads. If I put something that's too oily underneath my eyes, that happened when I was using the Burt's Bees eye cream, um, at night it caused me to have those like fatty deposit white head kind of things. So if you can get clogged pores really easily, I wouldn't use an oily eye cream if you already have oily skin. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully this doesn't have a lot of oil in it. <laughs> it says here, gently pat around the eye area, avoid contact with eyes. Doesn't that freak you out a little bit? 
I always think if it's going to be for your eyes, you should be able to, you know, not necessarily stick it in your eyeball, but be able to use it without fear of it, like, causing damage. All of that is in different languages, so it says deeply quench the delicate eye area. Oh, I wanted to know what the ingredients were. So the first ingredient is water, and then the one, two, there's, uh, the third is glycerin, and then the fourth is dimethicone. So uh, if you have something that doesn't start with water first, then it might be too oily. I know that if mine has like um, glycerin first or mineral, um, I can't think of what that word is called. It's almost like, like baby oil, you know, mineral oil. I don't want that as my first ingredient. Then I know it's just gonna be greasy and gross underneath my eyelid and I hate that. All right, the next thing I got in the box is these French lavender body wash infused buffer. This says it's a multi-use. So, oh my goodness, it actually smells good though. So I'm gonna pull it out of the box. That's what it looks like. And it says it's a body wash plus a buffer. Place the sponge underwater, squeeze to absorb, massage in a circular motion to cleanse skin. Squeeze out excess water after each use. I'm not sure how long this lasts for, but this first ingredient in this is glycerin. So uh, it also has sulfates in it and um, has lauric acid, which is a good thing, but to have glycerin as your first ingredient and then go straight into sulfates and then fragrance is not something that I want to put on my body. So again, something I will be giving to my sister because she's 19 and she don't care. Too old for that, although it smells delicious. All right, and then the next thing we got in the box is this Very Cherry Clean Makeup Melt Away Cleansing Balm by Pharmacy. This one is the Cherry Smell. I do already own this in a different, I was gonna say flavor, in a different smell um, that my friend, my coworker gave me. Mmm, I love that. And it doesn't have, it has like something green on it. There's no cherry, it's a, it's a green. And the, and the, this stuff inside is green, but I can't tell you what the smell is and I don't want to go to the bathroom to find out. <laughs> but this says it's a limited edition, so maybe uh, the green one that I have is the original and they always have that, but the cherry is the new one. This is 3.4 fluid ounces, so you do get a lot. You only need a, a little tiny bit and then you have, oop, it does come with this little scooper spatula kind of thingy in the lid. So what I do typically, because you know, my spatula got lost the first time around, I just take a, a scoop of it with the back of my fingernail and I just put one on each eye. And then um, because I don't wear face makeup, I only use eye and mouth. I'll do on my eyes and then on my lips and then I'll just rub it all in. And it's very um, emollient, so, and it's very slippery. It's like putting coconut uh, oil all over your face but once you wash it off there's no residue so that's what I really like I don't remember it drying out like it feeling tight after I washed it off um, I would have to use it again to find out but I do remember it not feeling um, oily and that's my main thing is I don't want it to feel oily and then the last thing in the box is from Becca which is an expensive brand this is called the glow gloss um, in the color Fox glove and uh, I've been dying to open this up. I haven't opened it yet to see what it looks like. Ooh, so that's what it looks like. I like the, the color. It kind of looks like the other color though, but this is supposed to, ooh, look at that wand. That doe foot is super long. All right, let's put it right here. So it's a little bit more on the pinky side instead of the purpley side but I do see the sparkles. Because this is a gloss, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Mm, I'm gonna get any dry. Oh, it's got a, uh, like a, a minty thing to it. But it is 
and it is shiny. Um, it's not like sticky at all. It doesn't, it's almost drying, if that makes sense. I don't know how it's a gloss and be dry. Um, yeah. But you know when you put like on just one layer of a lipstick from like a bullet lipstick, you can move it around, but it kind of still feels not super slippery. This is what it feels like. It's not super slippery. But it's a nice color. Um, I guess it kind of matches this eye look. And uh, yeah, that was all that's in the box. The cool thing with these boxes, again, is that it's it's $25. Um, I pay for it with my own money. I think it's worth it because I like to try out different products um, on a whim, especially when it comes to skincare, because with skincare, I don't know what's good, and I don't want to spend $30 on, say, um, a serum or a, a cream and not know if it works, whereas I can pay $25, get an eye cream from, like, Murad, their creams are about $35, probably for just this eye product, because I've seen Murad a lot before. And um, this is like sold at Ulta. So I know this is expensive. I would never have purchased it on my own. And now I can test it out and see if I like it um, with a collection of other things. Does that make sense? I know some people don't like to get subscription boxes because you don't know what's going to be inside. And if you're going to spend your money on something, you want to know what you're paying for. Whereas with this, it's like it's always going to be a surprise and you might get hits and misses you know the misses being oh I won't use this glycerin body foaming sponge kind of thing um, but because I do have my sister that I am sending things to I don't mind so much that I'm missing out but again it's $25 so if I was just going to buy this eye cream to test out from Ulta and I paid the $36, I wouldn't have gotten all these other things at the same time. So I think it's worth it. If you don't have $25 just, you know, on the side to test out, then obviously this would be not something that you're interested in. But I get an allowance every week. I have a portion of my paycheck go into a savings account that I'm allowed to do with what I want. It's not anything important all the important things get paid with the house account my frivolous uh, account that has you know sixty dollars going into each week is for you know random stuff my books my makeup if I wanted to go and get my hair done by the way I didn't even tell you guys I there's kind of much, uh, much growth out already I didn't realize my hair grew that fast although I didn't um, I didn't dye my hair blonde all the way to the roots because my hairdresser thought that that might be too harsh. I did do like here. I think I always had dark roots when it started. But yeah, I dyed my hair blonde for my birthday. I think I did this on the 6th of March. And I, it took a while for me to get used to the blonde because this isn't my natural hair color. I am more of a, a honey brown but I am loving this color and I think I'll stay this for a while. I don't know. Let me know down below what you think about the blonde. Is it, is it, is it too light for me? Does it wash me out? This lighting might be a little washed out because I do have, <coughs> <coughs> not Corona. I do have my um, umbrella light going on over here and then on this side is natural lighting from my window. So I might look a little washed out, but I wanted light and not shadows on my face. Um, yeah. So anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking with me, even though I haven't been on very much lately. Um, this, this whole like quarantine is driving me crazy. Oh, and I bought Animal Crossing for my Switch. So I've been doing that a lot lately. Um, I don't know how any of that stuff works, so if you want to be my friend, I don't know how to, like, get you as my friend. I don't have the Switch Play thing, that monthly subscription or yearly subscription fee, and I think that's how you play with other people, but I don't want to spend the $20 on that 
because that's not important. Let me know down below if you know anything about how to be friends with other people on um, Animal Crossing and uh, maybe I'll play with you. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and washing your hands. And uh, what an outro, huh? This is going to be such a weird thing to look back on when I'm older. Um, yeah, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you next time. I don't even know what my outro is anymore. <laughs> Bye!